This BMW has a laundry list of problems. The bumper doesn't line up with the fender. The kidney grills are broken and glued in place. The hood has too much play on the right side. The driver's side mirror's not working right. The passenger window regulator's going out. You can only open the trunk with the key. There's a nail in the front left tire. Headlights need polishing. Both fog lights are missing. The parking brake needs repair. And last but not least, the alternator gave up. So let's kick things off with a complete inspection on this car, then we'll go through and diagnose these individual issues and get some parts ordered up. Don't forget your hood lock. Better safe than sorry. Now, if you haven't recognized this E46 yet, I worked on it in November of last year. We did an intake manifold reseal with crankcase ventilation or breather and intake boots. We also resealed the oil filter housing with the Vanos line. We did a rear brake service with pads, rotors, and sensor. We also did front brakes valve cover reseal, control arm bushings, and oil service. So I just wanted to refresh my memory on what jobs we did before I start tearing into this thing and inspecting it. Valve cover still looks nice and dry. Thermostat looks good. Water pump looks good. I like to examine these two with a mirror from underneath. The power steering bottle is sweating quite a bit and that fluid is pretty gray and nasty. That should be a ruby red transmission fluid. There's also a leaking power steering cooler hose off the front and then a leaking suction hose off of the back of the bottle. The oil is not low, but uh, the oil light is coming on yellow uh, when driving the vehicle, so could be from a bad oil level sensor. The crust on the coolant reservoir can be a little bit concerning. The coolant is also pretty yellow, yellow and green. It's possible that it could be leaking a little bit. Um, we'll put some pressure into the cooling system and test it. Let's throw some pressure into it while we're inspecting the rest of the car. Could be not leaking at all, but we'll just put like 16 PSI in it real fast. Now, since I saw the car last November, it had a new DESA valve installed while it was in San Diego, and it just recently had a clutch kit installed with a new flywheel too. Brake fluid is testing at 2% moisture, so not too bad. We can recommend flushing at three. So that side has a jack pad, but this side does not. So I just bumped the jack stand up one extra tooth on this side to make up for the height. So the rear end is jacked up too. And then I saw this puddle right below my floor jack and I was like, well, is my floor jack leaking fluid? And then I looked up and it looks like our trunk is leaking fluid. It looks like ATF. Let's investigate. And again, the trunk latch button doesn't work, but if we do the key, that works. All right, what's leaking in here? And for all you BMW owners, if your trunk has this little plastic piece on this rubber, it's for hooking onto this weather stripping so you can get access down into your tire. Well, I pulled out the spare, which is a really nice spare. It's got some goop on it. Not sure what that's from, but there's a little bit of our culprit. And if we look down, we got some fluid in here. Not sure where it's from. I don't think the source is still here, but we'll clean it up and then we'll throw some tire pressure. We'll throw some air into that spare tire because uh, those spares tend to get low over time. And it happened to me. I needed my spare tire and went to pull it out and it didn't have enough air. Sage, you're getting all wet. Let's spray this out with some simple green. Clean this goop off this tire. See, it's only at 18 PSI. If you were to get a flat, that'd be a problem. So we'll pump this up to like 40. That's That way it has a little bit of room to deflate while it sits, you know? Now I really want to get into the fun stuff like diagnosing this trunk latch, but we have to finish the inspection. So trunk is put back together. No goodies on the bottom side of the underbody panel. Looks like we have an oil pan gasket in addition to maybe a front crank seal leak, but hey, what BMW does not have an oil pan gasket leak? We also have a leak at the high pressure power steering hose right here, pretty well saturated. You can see some fluid starting to collect on the suction hose here for the power steering pump. So that's also definitely leaking. Control arm bushings I replaced last visit. I'm gonna need to take a look at this tire to see if we can find the nail. The front left strut looks good, doesn't seem to be leaking. The front right strut also looks good too, no leaks. The engine mounts look pretty tired. You can see some micro cracking developing here and it looks like they're pretty well bottomed out. So would be nice to replace engine mounts, although it's not gonna cause a breakdown by any means. You can see that other engine mount looks pretty tired too. Definitely got some fluid saturation here on the manual trans. You know, shame on the shop who did this clutch kit because they should have at least like pressure washed this transmission or something. I mean, just give it a little bit of love. 
just to show that you were in there, you know what I mean? I would have at least. I mean, you're gonna have it out. Transmission mounts look good, and the flex disc looks good. I'm not seeing any cracking. Oh, I am. Looks like we have a crack in the flex disc right up there. Uh, parking brake is on, so I can't spin it, but let me go disengage the parking brake. Um, but that flex disc is worn. Looks like we have some cracks. Now, I really hope whatever shop did this clutch kit told them about this flex disc when they had the drive shaft removed because that is a complete labor offset to replace the flex disc while you have the transmission out for the clutch. The rear diff pushing. The rear diff pushing looks okay. And the rear diff is not leaking. It actually looks nice and bone dry. The rear shocks are so showing a little bit of sign of leaking there. This side is not leaking, but the driver's side is. The rear shock mounts are separating. See that big fat gap right there? That's the shock mount separating, so it creates a little bit of a play. And same thing over here. Very common. Every E46 will need shock mounts if you don't replace them with the shocks. Loads of meat in there. I did them last time we were here, but we're going to need to pull the wheels off and then get to the parking brake shoes underneath the rotor. We need to see what type of condition those are in because that's probably going to be our culprit as to why the parking brake isn't engaging right. And the front brakes, I did these ones too and these things have loads of meat. Now the last shop they went to said there was a nail in the front left tire. I haven't seen anything yet. Now I haven't seen any nails but I did find I believe to be my old plug job. I remember I put a plug in one of these tires last time I had it. You can see some small little bubbles there and so I think I'll just run this tire down to Les Schwab local tire shop have them do a proper patch plug in it. It still has a little bit of life left and uh, I'd rather just not put another plug in it. Now we can go to the fun stuff like diagnosing the rest of these issues. And as far as our cooling system test goes, uh, we had a little bit of a drop in pressure, maybe about one PSI, but I haven't seen any leaks anywhere. So I'm going to leave it on, but call it good for now. That's a wet little dog. Next step is we need to get this air box out of here. I need to get a look at this alternator, figure out what alternator it is that we need to order. There is a 90 amp and a 120 amp option. There's also a Vallejo and a Bosch. So there we go. So big 120, that's a 120 amp and right there. It's a Vallejo. So how do we know that it needs an alternator? Well, Eric called me on his way up to the North Coast from San Francisco, roughly about 300 miles. And he remembered me telling him the story about when Daniel bought my E46 and when the alternator took a crap on him on his way home to Texas. So Eric called me and he said, hey, I think the alternator just went out, battery light came on. Um, how long can I drive on this thing? I said, well, Daniel made it 60 miles with a brand new battery at least. So you should probably be good for 60 miles. Shut off the air conditioning, shut off the radio, don't use any electronics, you should be good to go. Once he did get home, he put a digital multimeter on the battery with the engine running and he saw 12.1 volts. That means that the alternator was not pushing any charging voltage straight to the battery. And so we know that this alternator is no longer producing charging voltage. So Eric already put a multimeter on the battery once he got home up here in the North Coast. With a good healthy alternator, you should be seeing in the high 13s to low to mid 14 volts. Next order of business is this passenger side window regulator. It is crunchy. And so when you're hearing those kind of noises, there's only one thing that it could be, and it needs a window regulator. One more time for the fans. Oh yeah, real crunchy. By the way, in case you guys are curious, this thing is a 2001 325i four door with a manual transmission roughly 192,000 miles on it. Manual trans, uh, manual seats, manual headlight switch too. So it was the driver's side view mirror. Ah, the motor works for left and right, but not up and down. You can hear it spinning in there. Yeah, it's stripped out. Maybe we can find a used unit on eBay. I think that may be the best option for us. Now, as far as headlight lenses go, I was thinking about polishing them, but the nice thing on these E46s is you can replace them. So I'm gonna look online, see if I can find replacement lenses. And then he also wants to fix the fog lights. This bumper, different than 
my bumper on my 2002 over there. Um, so I'm going to have to look online and see if I can find these wider style headlight lenses. And then he wants to get this body piece here straightened out. Hi, Sage. <laughs> Hello. He wants to see if we can straighten out this section of body right here. Um, so what I'm thinking is I'll probably loosen up the bumper as much as I can and then I'll get this pushed up into place and maybe try to run some self-tapping screws from the bumper up into the bottom lip of the fender, see if I can secure it up that way. As far as the trunk latch goes, it does not operate, but I've seen that if this is in the horizontal position and not the vertical position, it won't allow the latch switch to open. And look at that. It's fixed, baby. If this is in the vertical position, it'll open. But if you take this and put it in the horizontal position, it'll lock out the switch. So I was ripping off this front right tire to get access to the bumper, and these two lug bolts took way too many ugga duggas on the way out. They came out, but those threads are far too shiny in comparison to the others. So uh, we'll have to take a look at the hub. Might have to order up a tap or something. What do you think, Sage? No good. So this bumper's been used and abused. This is our culprit right here. I'm gonna see if I can loosen up these two ten. Get a little bit of adjustment out of them. Maybe I can get that. There we go. Fit it back into there. Oh yeah, baby. Come on, we're almost done. This would be such a huge win. All right, now push this up. Snug our bracket back down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom. I'd say that's pretty damn good. I'd say that's about as good as we're gonna get. What do you guys think? Would you call that fixed? I would. But this bracket on this other side needs some adjustment too. It's technically popped out. Let's see if we can pop it back in. Better than it was. Eric wants to know why this side has so much bounce and give. And this side's relatively tight. First thing I wanna check is adjustment of this schnubber. And I know that this one makes contact up here on the hood. Let's try backing out this schnubber and raising it. These ones lock in the air conditioning, I believe. AC condenser. That works, but now it's too high. This body line is pretty wide. This one is a lot more narrow. So I think this hood was removed at one point. I mean, there's some pretty severe signs that this thing was in an accident. I mean, this front piece is pretty bent and mangled. You look at this side, it's nice and straight. So an impact like that is gonna cause some misalignment left to right on this hood. The body is super crinkled right here too. And so this thing's obviously had a heavy collision. So I don't know if it's ever gonna line up right again because of this damage, you know? Okay, I think I have an idea before I give up. So if I push this side down, that side lifts up a little bit. So what if instead of adjusting our problem side, we bump this schnubber up and then when we shut this side, oh, oh, we're going to fix it. Well, that's about the best I can get right there. Let's see. What do you think? Took most of the bounce out of it and it's a little high, but I had to do that in order to get a little bit of tension on the hood. We'll talk to Eric, see what he thinks. I don't want you guys yelling at me for getting my greasy paws on the hood, so clean it with some detailer. From Stoner, take a dirty ass car, hit it with some ceramic detailer. Not too shabby. This thing will clean up nice. We need to pull these rear brakes off because we need to get access to the parking brake shoe to see what the condition is to see if we need to do shoes or not. Look at those Techstar pads, which that's what happened on my other E46. The parking brake shoes just kind of disintegrated and fell apart. This side's okay. We got to check the other side technically. Aha! So there's our bottom shoe. Plenty of meat and still intact. And there's our top shoe. Looks like it deteriorated and broke apart. 
and disappeared. So we're going to need to do parking brake shoes in the rear. So as far as the laundry list I got from Eric for the BMW, new key, I'll call about that. Trunk latch, uh, we got that fixed. Driver's side uh, mirror, we need a used mirror. We need to order two kidney grills, new headlight lenses and fog light assemblies. Body work, we got that front bumper on the right corner straightened out and the right side of the hood latch straightened out as best we could. Uh, nail in the front left tire needs a patch plug, it's from my previous plug. Passenger side window regulator needs a regulator and parking brake. The rear parking brake shoes on the left side has deteriorated and failed. Now it is finally time to get inside, turn this all into an invoice and an estimate and then call around and start getting an idea on pricing. So I'll wrap that up and then I'll give you guys a look at what the invoice and estimate process looks like for me. It is dumping proper today. Before I go inside, let's go take a look at the chickens. The run is totally wet. Upper butt cheek trail. Back. Back. What's up guys? It's pretty dry. There's only one little crack in the ridge cap there, so no water getting in. They can go outside if they want it. You guys staying dry? Well, enjoy your rainy day. I'll see you later. So after I do any inspection, I like to write it out in a nice organized fashion for myself and my customer. I like to label things one, twos, and threes, one being the highest priority, twos being next, threes being preventative maintenance. So as far as what I put down, just a description on how I fix the hood, a description on how I fix the bumper, some details on ordering a new key, an explanation on how the trunk lock was fixed, uh, explanation of what is causing the parking brake issue, that's a one, headlight lenses, we're going to be replacing both of them fog lights, installing new fog light assemblies, and driving, installing new kidney grills, ordering up a used driver's side mirror, that up and down feature is stripped out, confirm that the window regulator has failed, uh, recommend the alternator replacement, Vallejo 120 amp, taking the tire to get a patch plug, driver's side shock is leaking, few cracks present in the flex disc, oil pan gasket is leaking, uh, recommend that with new engine mounts, dipstick tube o-ring, uh, coolant flush is due to its color. Power steering system is leaking. I also added one more additional hose in there, making that four hoses total, and then an engine clean service to get all that cleaned up afterwards. And so I thought you guys might be interested in this. This is just a general estimate that I worked up for Eric. The first line of each job is the labor. The second line is going to be parts. So I charge $75 an hour for all friends and family and local jobs. So, you know, one hour labor for the alternator plus 310 for the part. Window regulator, you're looking at you know roughly 175. Parking brake replacement for the shoes and hardware kit, looking at roughly you know 170. Headlight lenses plus cost, new key, coolant flush labor plus the cost of coolant, uh, power steering flush plus the new bottle plus three hoses. There's also one more hose being added into there. Labor for installing the fog lights plus the cost of the assemblies. Kidney grill replacements off eBay. Used driver mirror. Um, labor and part, patch plug, quote for rear shocks plus parts, quote for flex disc plus parts, oil pan gasket, labor and parts. So all in all to get this car back up to tip top position, we're looking at roughly 3,200 bucks. That's with labor and parts. And keep in mind that all of these parts are straight cost. I am not marking up parts one bit. This is how much I buy them for. That's how much they're being sold to Eric for. Finally, we are back with a few parts to get onto the E46. I'm still waiting on a majority of my parts to come from eBay and FCP Euro. Got a brand new 120 amp Bosch alternator to throw in. It's supposed to be a Vallejo, but the Bosch will work just fine. And we have a new window regulator and motor from Dorman. First step on getting this alternator out of here is getting this electric fan removed. Next step is getting the belt removed. This engine has a hydraulic tensioner. Get yourself a ratchet, Allen socket, twist it, righty tighty. Pop the belt off. We don't have to take it off completely, but we will inspect it. It looked good on my inspection. Now we can disconnect the electronics from the alternator. We got this two pin plug off the back. Then we have a 17 millimeter nut for the charging cable, but this is live even with the engine off. So before we do that, and inside this little box, this is a junction. This is where the battery cable comes up from the trunk where the battery is located up here to the engine bay. And then this wire runs across, comes over, 
and then comes down to the alternator. So if you disconnect this wire right here, you're separating the alternator from the battery and that wire off the back of the alternator is no longer live. Now we just gotta bust loose the two bolts that hold the alternator in. They're both 16 millimeter. Also holds on the idler pulley. There you go. Don't forget to spin it. Ooh, we might wanna replace that while we're in there. That sounds pretty terrible. There's our bottom bolt, slightly shorter. Now, we should be able to get our alternator out. There you go. So my day just got a little bit better. I was calling around trying to source this 120 amp Vallejo alternator. I called my local Napa, best price that I've seen all week long. They have it in stock in their local location. They're shipping it up to my closest store. They have the idler pulley that I'm looking for and they have a tap and die set that I need. Customer service was great. They're getting my money from now on. So I just gotta say Chandler, if you ever see this, great job dude, great customer service. Appreciate you. And I'm gonna start shopping at Napa now. Never leave your fires unattended. Let's knock out this window regulator. Now I'd love to go through every single process on how to do this window regulator, but if I did that, this video would be way too long. So if you do want to see how to do a window regulator, I have a video on my channel for front and rear BMW E46 regulators. Get under here. Disconnect the door handle. Gonna disconnect the battery real quick before we start messing around with the airbag. That was the most difficult vapor barrier I think I've ever cut off. I want to surprise Eric with a little extra work on this car. I'm trying to decide between an interior detail or an exterior detail. There we go. One window regulator, medium rare. I did cross reference between both parts. They both look good. Now the glass comes back down and we line this biatch up. Does it work? Okay, I call that good. I'm gonna surprise Eric with detailing the interior of this car. So we're gonna use some stoner leather cleaner. We're gonna see how it works on this door. I got an interior cleaner too, but I mean, this is technically like a leather vinyl, right? Yeah, Eric's not paying for a detail, but he was my very first customer when I started this channel and paid me good money to fix this car. 
and he's paying me good money to fix this car again. So one to say thank you just because he's such a rad dude and he's been such a big supporter of me and my business venture. But secondly, he's just an awesome friend and coworker. I worked with him as a firefighter. He's actually a pilot and he contracts uh, with the state of California as a fire tanker pilot. And this dude is badass. Long one. I mean, he's dropping tanker loads like 100 feet from the ground, 200 feet from the ground, and a giant badass tanker dropping 1,200 gallons. And I just had such a great time working with him last season, so I just want to give him a little surprise gift to say thank you. And I'm also really hoping that he'll teach me how to fly one day, because he's a certified flight instructor. And so once I'm making some YouTube money, actually making money, I'm hoping that he'll teach me how to fly and I can buy a plane and me and my brother can fly. And then I'll start taking you guys on flights with me. I'll do a flight giveaway to my subscribers. Window regulator is done. Another job we can knock out today is these kidney grills. I just got a new shipment from eBay in today. Also, check out how much this thing is leaking power steering fluid. It is a good idea we're doing those hoses. Let's get this old grill out of here. Now they did a number with some glue, some super glue or something, trying to get that to stay in. I don't know how we're gonna clean that up. Cause I gotta chip it out because it's taking up too much of the void space to get the kidney grills to seal. But that paint right there is just flaking up. Oh my goodness. Eric knows the condition of this hood though, so I have his blessing, I think. Let's test fit on this passenger side. Ain't nothing I can do about this paint, guys. This thing needs a respray. But Eric was talking about getting this hood resprayed, maybe front bumper, so. We'll be all right. Let's keep the interior detail going. We'll hit this rear right door now. Oh my goodness, I missed all the application. Anyways, we went thick. I'm gonna go crazy with this right now and I'm gonna use a soft plastic bristle brush and see how this does. I'd say that's a pretty good result. Good morning, folks. Ran to Napa Auto Parts this morning and I got the replacement Vallejo alternator. This is a 120 amp, it's a remanufactured, 260 bucks. So I saved some good money there. We also got a replacement idler pulley by Ina for this offset mounting pulley. This one is super noisy. And as I was looking the car over, I said, oh, I better spin this one too. And this one sounds atrocious. Sounds terrible. I got that one replaced. And then I also got a M12 by 1.5 tap and an M12 by 1.5 die. Morning was awesome. Thank you, Chandler. And he hooked me up with a AAA discount. Time to get this alternator back in. Now I've shown this many times already, but <clears throat> this nut that sandwiches the alternator to the oil filter housing is a bushing and it moves in and out. Last time this was installed, this bushing was pushed forward and it slid and bit into the oil filter housing. Well, it's going to make it difficult to install. So you take a socket, so you have empty negative space in here for the bushing to slide back out. 
You can do this with a bench vise or with a pair of C clamp. Tighten it up like that. And there you go. Now that bushing is flush with the alternator housing. This thing will fall right in. When we throw our bolt through, it'll bite onto the threads. It'll suck it back in and bite tight to the housing. Beautiful. No noise. Here's the old idler. Now I didn't even get approval from Eric to order those parts, uh, but it's going to cost him no extra labor. And I wouldn't be able to confidently put this belt back on with those two pulleys being as noisy as they are. So I'm making the executive decision myself and uh, I'm sure Eric will agree. I need to knock out this tensioner pulley. Normally I'd replace this tensioner completely, but it's just this pulley. Now we can totally throw the belt back on. <sighs> Gotta check every pulley, of course. I've told you guys multiple times about my story of leaving a belt hanging off one rib. And that rib sliced the hose open and blew the engine. I made a YouTube short about it. So many people love to put their opinion in on that video. But it turned out to be a good little video. Got some traffic to the channel. So many people just called me stupid rookie. And it's like, look, I was brand new. What happens? Mistakes happen. Just all about how you, it's just all about how you handle them when they do happen. And I was going to throw the electric fan back in, but I'm going to leave that out until I do the coolant flush. So that's about it for the new parts I got for today. Let's tear into this tap and die kit and get these uh, lug bolts figured out. Grabbed my die holder and we'll just drop this puppy down. Start it by hand. Much better. Cleaned it up real nice. All right, now I'm gonna grab a square socket to fit into my M12 by 1.5 tap. And I don't know which one it is, so I'm just gonna chase all of them. Well, I want to keep making progress, but I'm out of parts to replace, so I'm going to run this front left tire over to the tire shop and get that patch plug installed. And luckily, Eric kept the receipt in the glove box, so they should do it for free. Sage, load up. Good girl. Les Schwab. And more good news, when I got back, I discovered a new package. Looks like our used driver's side mirror came in. Well, we definitely got a nice clean door to work with. So it looks like this entire trim runs all the way up down the window, all the way back down here. Pretty sure this whole thing needs to come out. Or at least this side, so I'm going to pop the pins out on this side. Okay, and then we got one, two, three screws. These are safety screws, so they're triangulated. There we go. I just realized, rut row, we got a problem. Ah. Let me see what we can do here. Maybe try to pop the glass out, see if there's a component we can swap over, go into the motor. Well, I see what's broken. This is a little plastic rod, and that's what broke. And right here, it's still good on the new one. So I'm gonna see if I can tear into this and swap components. Oh, my allergies are killing me today. We gotta power through, baby. This right here is the gear that adjusts up and down. This gear right here, just left to right. I think I may try to take a pick tool and pick this rod out, see if I can get it out and install it in the old motor. We'll see. Oh, I got the ball out. Now if I can pull this up and out of the motor, I got it out, I only damaged the very bottom tooth, so 
If I can get it out on this one, I can suck that new one in. Okay, I got the gear all the way out. Now I just need to pull it out of the motor. Okay, I got that out. Sorry, you guys kind of missed that shot. I used the window motor to push that gear all the way up. Then I pulled it out with needle nose. Now I'm gonna try to do the same thing and go up on the window switch and try to feed this new gear back down into that motor and then we'll pop it into the ball socket. Here we go, wish me luck. Oh, yeah! All right, now let's test it. We're good, baby, we fixed it. These motors have a little clutch in them and when they hit the max, they start spinning. We got up and down and we got left and right. Love it when a plan comes together. Hell yeah, guys. Let's get this mirror back in. She gets so funny when she's playing with the dogs through the fence. <laughs> well, with the door panel off, you can tell I missed a couple spots last night. So let's give this thing one last little scrub-a-dub-dub and throw it back on. Mirror's working. Well, just got back from the Schwab. Free tire repair, just as I expected. Great business model. It is a cooker today. I'm actually in shorts and flip-flops for a change. Still waiting on parts from FCP Euro, so Let's continue on this detail for a little bit. Next up, I'm just gonna hit these seat backs with the little leather cleaner. Yeah, I'm gonna do seat, seat, and then floor. I'm gonna pull the mats out of this. Yeah. Ooh. It's a beautiful day. Chickens are out for a little field trip. Letting them stretch their wings. And Sagey Girl is keeping an eye on them. We gotta interrupt this detail party because we finally got our parts. Headlight lenses from Magneti Morelli. Jug of coolant. ATE brake shoes. ATE brake hardware kit. Power steering suction hose. Power steering high pressure hose. Power steering oil cooler hose. BMW factory headlight gaskets. Still waiting on our fog lights. And we have our fourth power steering hose that showed up early. Now I'm going to get things kicked off with the headlight lenses and gaskets. But before I do that, I need to run to the parts store, pick up a tube of clear silicone because I'm going to run a bead of clear silicone on top for extra insurance. There's no way I'm going to have these headlight lenses leak after I'm done with them. Just got back, picked up some VersaChem flowable clear silicone. Next step, we're going to pull these hammered headlight buckets out. They are due.
Chickens, get out of the garage. Now you can tell this side marker's been glued together a time or two. It's got silicone, super glue, all the above. Okay, now we need to disassemble these, get this trim strip off the bottom, get this plastic stupid piece that always turns into goo and falls apart off, and then we'll take the lens out. Now, if I was doing like a show car, I would buy this piece and replace it, but they're so expensive, I'm probably just gonna leave it off. It doesn't really make any visual difference. Now we're just gonna go under and... We don't wanna break these clips though, cause these clips are part of the headlight housing, not the lens. Just wanna lift up and let them pop. I've only done this like once or twice. We're gonna put in these new seals. So now we'll pick this headlight gasket out. We definitely wanna put the seam on the top. It's got a sticky tape adhesive on it. If I remember correctly, these things are pretty hard to get fully seated. So I can take a pocket screwdriver and lever them. That works pretty well. You gotta be careful not to break these. Time to put the chickens away. Hopefully they're home. Yep. There they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good night, chickies. Love you. This side marker is hammered doggy doo doo. We're gonna give it the old super glue treatment to see if we can fix this up. Well, for the last job of the day, let's knock out a coolant flush. First thing I wanna do is evacuate as much fluid as I can out of the bottle. Get it. All right, so I'm going pretty simple with this coolant flush. Just a five gallon bucket underneath the lower radiator hose. Pull as much fluid as I can out of the expansion tank. Go between the radiator and the hose. Just push against the outside of the collar of the hose connection. We'll wiggle up and down. Got some Xerex by Valvoline G48 coolant, but I'm just gonna pour some in straight and then add some water in after. And then when you're filling, what I like to do is I crack this bleeder screw and I pull it out all the way. And I know I'm bled when I fill it up and it pisses out of this bleeder screw. Then I know the cooling system is sufficiently bled until I run it. You got coolant peeing out of that bleed screw. And we got at least a gallon of coolant into the system. I like it to where the, the float is below maxed. So if you can pull up on it and it has a little bit of throw, that's where I like it. Never had any problems overfilling it. Now we pressure test it. Make sure none of those hose connections we pulled off are leaking. 17 PSI into the system. And I'm gonna let that sit overnight. I'll see you in the morning. It is a new day, we got some new parts. Our hella fog lights came in and that is the last of the parts we're waiting on. Let's kick today off with replacing the parking brake shoes in the rear. I think the first step here is gonna be disconnecting this spring and then maybe we'll go to these springs that hold the parking brake shoe into the backing plate. We're gonna have to go through the hole here for the lug bolts push in and quarter turn so you get that hardware to release in here All right fits into both shoes you spin this collar it extends this side out and that pushes the shoes farther apart or brings them closer together to change your parking brake adjustment to give you a quick representation this is what it looks like and then right in between here is our parking brake mechanism and that causes the pads to open up 
and that's ran off of a cable. So the shoes rub on this backing plate. That's what they're held up against. And so it's basically the contact point. I just like to loosely hit it with the brush. So and spray it out with some brake cleaner. Sage, were you digging? <laughs> Look at that dirty little face. I'm gonna put a touch of this pure nickel special, never sees, onto where these parking brake shoes touch the backing plate. It's what I like to do on drum brakes, and this is the same concept. It's a drum brake, just a little bit smaller. There's gotta be a better way to do this, I just don't know it. I'm gonna suck the screw all the way in because we have pretty much a brand new rotor and brand new shoes now. We're gonna be able to adjust these shoes with the rotor on. And how you do that is this adjustment screw lines up with these lug, with these holes for the lug bolts. So if we install this rotor and we need to make any adjustments, line the hub up to that adjuster screw and we can turn it. So for now, we're just gonna throw this on. I'll play with it afterwards. And this car is a manual trans, so in my opinion, it's a little bit more important to get the parking brake to bite a lot sooner than an automatic trans. Well, not a lot sooner, but you know, I like a really short throw on it because if you're parking on a steep hill with a manual trans, you gotta ram that parking brake down in order to get the car to hold. Now it's starting to bind, it's starting to drag just a little bit. Man, I'd love a two post lift. With the parking brake cable completely slack, I'm gonna adjust these till I get them to barely drag. All right, both sides are adjusted. I'm gonna throw the rear wheels on, give them a spin with that, and then we'll call it good. I think I'm gonna adjust it again. Let's see how many teeth it takes to max out. So about 10 teeth. I'd like to lower that down a little bit, just so as the parking brake wears down, we can slowly extend that throw. So I'm gonna adjust it a little bit more. Try to get this parking brake to engage a little bit lower like that. So I took both rear wheels off again, went through the drum brake adjustment, got the e-brake handle to max out at eight teeth. And then I pulled up this cover here, got access to these two 10 millimeter nuts down here, put about 10 to 12 turns on each one. And in order to get this cover up, what you do is you don't pull from the front, because it has this lip, that lip slides down underneath that center console piece. Uh, what you do is you do the reverse of this, you get that front lip installed down, and then you push the sides in the back and they have little plastic clips. But if you wanna open it up, just grab the leather from back here. You can actually pop this up and then grab this whole handle and push the button down and lift up really hard, but be careful, there's this little half circle piece of metal in here and one time doing that, I just skinned my arm, took a big chunk of meat out. So just be cautious if you do take this cover off. Um, but now this thing is maxed out at six. So I'm happy with that. Nice short throw. The wheels are spinning freely. We're good to go. Next step is we're gonna pull as much fluid out of the power steering system as we can. We're gonna knock out these hoses, the bottle and the flush. And I'm gonna do that before I do the headlights because look at all that beautiful access to those two power steering cooler lines right there. Well, I'm gonna go down below, 
disconnect the power steering hoses at the rack and at the pump. So hopefully this will be a good angle. I gotta kinda keep you guys out of the way cause it's gonna get messy down here. First one I'm gonna do I think is this high pressure power steering nut right here. Then a 10 millimeter over here to take this bolt out. This is the little bracket that holds our high pressure power steering hose out of the way. So it's an 18 millimeter nut at the pump and a 19 millimeter banjo bolt on the rack. There goes our banjo bolts, heard two of them drop. And we got our new high pressure power steering hose from Ryan. I've never had any issues with the replacement hoses from Ryan. I've installed quite a few and they come with new ceiling washers as well so you don't have to worry about sizing those up. I spoke too soon. This is the wrong high pressure power steering hose. This one goes to the side so this bend right here is incorrect. So that means I need to source a new high pressure power steering hose. Alright I'm going to disconnect the banjo bolt for the other power steering hose. This one goes rack to power steering cooler. Pressure line is a 19, this one's a 22. Hose pick tool, stick it in this clamp right here and just twist it. Get that to bust loose. I'll pull this hose off. Yeah! Ba boom These hoses were so bad. These things were leaking terribly. We got our new suction hose. Feed this power steering hose down. I'm gonna go down below and get it secured real quick. Both our hoses are mounted. This one's mounted to the cooler. This one's mounted to the pump. All right, got the old bottle bracket here. Fit this over the hoses. I like to get this bottle bracket mounted up first. Now we just gotta wait for our damn hose. The show must go on. We must keep trudging forward. Now that I am cleaned up a little bit, let's get into these fog lights. So here we are, brand new Hella Fog Light, right out the box. Comes with the bulb and the plug. Now we gotta figure out how this thing will mount and if this bumper still has the correct mounting hardware. Looks like these two tangs right here made into these two. And then this little guy goes into this hole. But then what holds it in, you know what I mean? So I looked it up on Insta you feed those little clips in to that right side and then there's supposed to be a clip but there's no clip because the body shop that did this front bumper removed it so i got an idea check that out zip tie for the win she ain't going nowhere that way in case the bumper gets resprayed they can remove these fog lights and reinstall them if i were to have melted it it would kind of be a one and done type deal. Nice. I'm gonna do a little bit of work in here getting this wiring harness cleaned up. All right, we are fastened and ready to rock. These are looking really nice. Next step, headlights. Let's do it. So this busted ass side marker from last night, I was able to super glue it. Then I ran that clear silicone all the way around the seam. So it's nice and sealed up tight. Eric, we need to buy side markers, but this thing will stay together until we buy a new set. And this front end is going to look so good with a new set of side markers. New headlight lenses and fog lights. Looking great. 
Let's get this air box back in here. She's coming together. If only I had that power steering hose. Out of the garage. Out. Get on. Get. Get. All right. Hood is relatively buttoned up. I need to go through it one more time. Let's shut this bad girl. See how things look. New fogs, new headlight lenses, new kidney grills. Looking pretty clean. Let's turn them on and see what they look like. Cleaned up that harness in there a little bit. A few days later, we are back with the correct hose. And on top of all this, my microphone breaks. Thanks for putting up with some of my subpar audio quality during this. I was mistaken, it's a 17 for this nut. It's never easy getting these banjo bolts started. There we go, new power steering pressure hose, new cooler hose, new suction hose, good to go. Yesterday my editing software crashed and I lost over three days worth of editing on this video. Today, my microphone breaks. Shout out to my brother Evan, AKA Vanader, for letting me borrow his microphone till my new one shows up. Check out his YouTube channel, he is awesome. He has epic videos. Appreciate you, Evan, thank you. It's time to get the power steering system filled up, and for that we are using Amsoil 100% Synthetic OE ATF. So now I'm just turning the steering wheel with the engine off, left to right, all the way to lock, just to get any air out of the power steering system. Now before I go firing this thing up and bleeding the power steering system, just kind of want to run through what repairs I did. That way I can be mentally prepared if an issue comes up when I fire this thing up. You know, did you do a coolant flush and not put coolant back in it? Did you do a check engine light repair but you didn't clear the check engine light? Stuff like that. So what we did, alternator, window regulator. I also took that door panel off and had the key on while the airbag was unplugged. So we're going to need to go in and clear the airbag light. Parking brake shoe replacement. That means we're going to need to test the parking brake once we get this car driving. Headlight lenses. If there's any bulb warnings that come on when I start this car up, it could be related to some of the stuff that I had unplugged. Coolant flush. That means I'm going to need to run the defroster on max heat, make sure that cooling system is bled. Power steering flush with new bottle. I need to put fluid in this thing, which I did, but we're going to need to recheck it after I burp any air bubbles out of it. Fog light assemblies. I'm going to need to double check those, activate the fog light switch a few times. Kidney grill replacements. Replacement driver's side mirror. Gonna need to go through the functions on that driver's side mirror, make sure it's working well. Idler pulley and tensioner pulley. We're gonna need to double check that belt with the engine running. Listen for any noises, make sure that the belt looks good. Tapping that wheel hub on the front right side. Wheels are already put back on, the threads are nice and clean, but we're gonna need to double check all these with a torque wrench or with a breaker bar, make sure they're nice and tight when it's back down on the ground. Patch plug over in the front left. TPM light should not be on, but if it is, we're gonna to need to reset that by driving. Engine clean and degrease, we're gonna do that once the car is back down, and then we fix the front bumper, we adjusted the hood, and we diagnosed the trunk. So I just wanna share that because that's the kind of stuff that goes through my mind as a mechanic after I'm done with a repair for a customer. You know, you don't just fire it up, hope for the best, and give them their car back. You gotta double check your work. With that being said, washer fluid is good, power steering fluid is good, coolant is up to level, engine oil is up to level, brake fluid is up to level. All right, let's fire this thing up and see how she runs. Yellow oil light on startup, indicating a bad oil level sensor. Fluid level. Drops pretty good. We're gonna need to top that off. Now we need to turn the wheel some, make sure we bleed that power steering system properly. You can hear the pump cavitate getting the air bubbles out. 
The alternator was a little loud at startup, but it seemed to quiet down. Idler pulley is whisper quiet. Tensioner pulley is whisper quiet. Belt looks nice and straight. Engine is running really smooth now that it's fired up and warmed up a little bit. Another thing we need to do for the cooling system. So this is how I bleed cooling systems on BMWs with a mechanical water pump. Defroster, max heat, max speed. And I let this thing run and I will give it RPMs and I'll hold it around about 2000 RPM and I'll put my hand up on the dash and I wanna wait for that defroster air to get so hot to the point to where it's almost burning my hand. Once I feel the air getting that hot through to the defroster, I know that it's properly bled through the heater core. Gotta set the time because the battery was disconnected. Do that by turning this little dial on the gauge cluster. And you see that little dot right there? That is a manipulation dot. That means that this gauge cluster potentially does not belong to this car. So if you ever see that little dot on a car you're buying, be wary. I'm gonna set the tire pressures to the door jam spec. And I always like to do up to four people, 33 in the front, 38 in the rear. Now it's hot enough to burn my hand. Engine's at operating temperature. I held it up at a couple thousand RPM. This thing is properly bled. Sadly, my ISTA has been acting up, haven't been able to use it for a while, so I can't clear the airbag light and my Foxwell scan tool is incapable of doing it, so we'll figure that out. Well, I'm definitely not pressure washing at 7.30 at night, so we'll finish up the detail in the front and uh, we'll finish up the rest of the car tomorrow. For this bit, we're using Stoner Trim Clean. Apparently, this is supposed to be pretty foamy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna call it there for the detail. We hit the dash, steering wheel, gauge cluster. We hit all of the door cards. We hit the floor mats, we hit the carpets. We hit the seats, we hit the kicks, we hit the sides, we hit the center console. I think the back seat turned out the best. Carpets got way better. Back seat turned out really nice. Door cards turned out really nice. I just need to do those rear floor mats, I almost forgot. I love spraying this foam. I notice it changes colors a little bit too and it hits some real nasty stuff. Now I think the detail is done. Tomorrow we're gonna degrease the engine bay and the undercarriage. We're gonna wash the exterior, road test it, and then call Eric and have him come pick this thing up. Tied in with Eric this morning and he requested I knock out an oil service. So I picked up seven quarts of this full synthetic Euro blend by O'Reilly. I'm gonna bump this car up to a 540 since it's getting pretty high in mileage. And this stuff actually meets BMW Long Life 01 standards. So here's what the engine looks like before pressure washing. We've got oil saturation all the way down to the transmission cross member. Reset the oil indicator and slap a sticker on the windshield. Kind of got a misfire on cold start. We'll drive it, fire it up again, see how it runs. Has been sitting for a while. Just spraying things down with some simple green.
Here's a look after the pressure washing. Power steering hoses are nice and dry. Oil pan's looking good. I noticed though that the gap underneath this headlight is far too large. I think I have it misaligned when I installed it. That looks much better. Got the little Ram Air piece installed and found some mismatched push pins to get that fixed. And last step, this is my secret sauce. Take some stoner trim shine or some more shine less time and you just spray all the black plastics. They can be slightly wet, but you do this, customer's gonna open the hood and be amazed at how things look. And you don't even have to rub it in. Just give it a nice light fog. Well, maybe not light, personal preference. But I like to make it look glossy. Hit the intake boots, hoses. Now, if you're interested in the leather cleaner, the upholstery cleaner, the trim clean, the trim shine, or any of the other products that I used, use code DAYOFF15 at stonercarcare.com. Get yourself 15% off. It's also a great way to directly support my channel. We all need detail products. Might as well save a little bit of money, support your favorite YouTuber at the same time. Let's take this thing for a rip. Also, this car has a little bit of vibration inside the cab, but when we do the engine mounts, it'll fix that up. I torqued the wheels, I set the tire pressure, I reset the oil light, I fixed the headlight. Yeah, it does need a drive shaft. I put it under load, I can hear that center support bearing bouncing around. Beautiful day though, got some rain here on the north coast. Two crispy tacos with asada. Um, avocado and sour cream, please. Successful road test, folks. Look at that beautiful detailed engine. Right now I'm jumping into the power steering flush. I wasn't happy with the clarity on that fluid, so I evacuated all the fluid out of the bottle and I'm gonna pour in some new fluid and flush it through. And so the fluid isn't exactly clear yet. Still has a little bit of murkiness to it, so. I'm gonna let that fresh fluid cycle through, evacuate it again, fill it again, we'll see how it looks. And as the reservoir gets low before it cavitates, add in some more fresh fluid. All right, I evacuated and filled about four times and you can see the white of the filter element down in there. Fluid's looking a lot better, we'll call that good. I like to chuck my detail brush and my electric drill, a little bit of stoner wheel cleaner. Better. I noticed that this side skirt is hanging out when I was washing it. Fixed. You just gotta hit some glass and I'm done, I swear. I'm gonna drive it one more time though, but I'll be done working on it, I promise. All right, I am D-U-N. Done. This thing reminds me of the car I sold to Daniel. Same color, pre-facelift. That front end is looking sweet. This car cleaned up really nice. Can't wait to unveil it to Eric. I mean, it's his car. He knows what it looks like, but I'm hoping to uh, surprise him with a nice condition. Interior is looking groovy. Seats are nice and clean. Dash is nice and clean. Good to go. He's coming tomorrow morning to pick it up. Eric, I'm taking your car to meet my old lady for dinner. We got 23 miles and counting. Probably gonna put close to 35 miles on it, I think. Um, driving really good. 
You shined her all up, man. I did. God, she looks great. I got carried away, but uh, <laughs> my girlfriend says I have a problem with over delivering. No, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I believe it's true now. It's but lovely. I, I just washed it. I'll send these to Kirk. Yeah, Kirk's gonna be jealous. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah, I used some wheel cleaners, some tire shine, and then I just did a standard wash and hit it with some detail spray. But I did detail the interior for you. Oh my god, um, dude! Thanks, man. That it's was great. Yeah, that I was, love these E46. That was just for a thank you for uh, you know supporting the biz, being a good coworker, good friend, taking me and Evan flying. Um, so we miss you around the base. I miss sure, it too. You know, it's, it's nice working with you guys. It's different without you there, but you pop around. Yeah, let's go over the list because I lost track. Of I know all the stuff. These yeah. are the notes I just made, so you can kind of know for next time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you felt it, but it has a little bit of a rough idle on cold start. It goes away once it warms up. Okay. Um, I smoked it while the air while the air box was out. Yeah. And I saw a little bit of smoke wisping from the Disa valve which is what Kirk had replaced down in San Diego. Yeah. And since, and he since did? We, yeah, he, that was when he called me. Yeah. At that point, we had already agreed on so much work. I didn't want to call you and start adding on more and more jobs. <laughs> it's okay. And yeah, I, I was just you. like, let's get the car back to you and, yeah. and well, drive, let's drive it for, it for a little while. while. Wow, jeez. Um, right. But the Disa valve's right here. Okay. Yep. And then there's a little diaphragm, a yeah. little like it's pot. A, it has that little rotating. Exactly. Yeah. From what I saw, it was wisping smoke from that area, so All it's right. possible it could be just a minor vacuum leak, or what I was also thinking last night too is, um, I don't know if the spark plugs have ever been done, but sometimes spark plugs can act up a little bit when they're For cold sure. like that too. Yeah. Um, but if that were to come back or stay steady, we can swap around with the plugs. Shouldn't be too much for sure. to diagnose it, and then we can kind of go from there. I'm so there. lucky to have found you, man. That's just how it works I, I love it's working so on awesome, these, so it's, yeah. a, it's a win-win. Yep. You did feel that drive shaft. I did. I did, too. I yeah. felt it at like 60 miles an hour, yeah. and then I felt it at 80. Just a little if bit. If you put it under load at highway speed, it just feels like it's almost a vibration coming from the trans tunnel. And you think that's the flex disc probably right I there? I think that's the center support bearing. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so, yeah. yeah, where the two pieces meet. For sure. That'll bit. be a good job when it gets a little worse down the road. Yeah. We'll do the center support bearing and the flex disc. Exactly, yeah. at the same time. At the same time, which they should have done when they did the clutch down there. Exactly. I'm still disappointed in those guys. Yeah. Pan gasket engine. And then mounts. just the pan gasket and the rear shocks. Yep. Exactly. Oh yeah, fog light assemblies. Yep. Nice. Yep. Brand new right. fogs. That's killer. Right yep. on. I you can we put were LEDs in there too. For sure. This is all stock stuff, right? Yes. OE. Yeah. Yeah. These love are it. the OE Hella fog lights. Yeah. And then the OE Magneti Morelli I love headlight it. lenses. I also did new gaskets. Nice. And then you see here, I ran a bead of clear silicone of just course. for extra insurance. Yep. Get and we did grills too. Kidney grills too. Yep. You'll see on the video. I didn't touch the paint. I just didn't well, want to. You? you can't touch. There's nothing to do there other than take no. it to a body shop. I just, them. the driver's side mirror. So oh, I, I actually, forgot about that. You found a motor for that? I did. I ordered a mirror. It turns out yeah. that it was slightly different. The plug had a couple more wires. So I took it apart and I found what gear was stripped and broken in your mirror uh -huh. and i extracted it out of the used mirror and then i reinstalled it so this is all your factory mirror that's super and cool, the up man. and down is working as well and it's all it'll yeah. all be covered in the video it's gonna be a i can't sweet wait video. to watch this. it's gonna be a sweet video when's it gonna come out probably after i get today's bits get some editing in and punched all that in. yeah nice and then i did add on two things without your approval <laughs> um, okay. i kind of had to yeah fair enough um, but it was only 80 dollars in parts <laughs> right the idler pulley yeah. which is right there yep came out with the alternator and it was super f noisy it was rattling, and then the yeah. tensioner pulley down there while i had the belt off that was equally noisy as well <laughs> that's not enough money man it is you sure you're taking good care of yourself it's, on it's this, just yeah. for labor okay so you're you're in good shape all right um i got something else for you too but I know you don't have the black. Nice. Rack. Yeah. No, I only got the I only got the tan and brown. Well, we did a black, and those Slick. are the flex fit adjustables. Slick. Yeah. Thank you. And I know you're a beanie dude nice. too. Nice. So. Hell yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Always, dude. Man. Absolutely. No, these hats fit great. Right. Nice. Let's test this bad boy out. I like the color too. Yeah. Totally. Oh yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I like the folds on them too. Yeah. So this is the the conclusion. Oh, that's way better. The, it's yeah. better, but. You're fighting it between tensioning it and trying to keep the body line even. Oh, it's fine. That's you know awesome. What I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Exactly. 
This one, the, the lens has been broken off of the housing before. Gotcha. I glued it back on and sealed it up with the same clear silicone I used. Okay. But you can get these for like 30 bucks. Yeah. And if you were to do a new set of whites or ambers, it would like really make this front end pop. So but yeah, let me unlock it. I, I hit all the leathers. Okay. Um, I, hit, I hit the carpets, some of the carpets, scrub the mats and stuff. Um, yeah, come on, that looks great. Jesus. Yeah, I had some right. some stoner products I wanted to test out. Yeah. And um, some it's like all in the video, cleaner. isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Hit all the doors. I scrubbed all the doors and stuff. I didn't do the trunk, but no, good. The back seat's nice and clean. Sure is. There's a bunch of staining underneath this back one. Yeah. And so I used a fluid extractor and and some carpet foam and stuff and scrubbed oh it out God. and it, it looks better yeah but you'll see it produced some straight black coffee water got some material out of there yeah, did you? It, was, it was gnarly it looked like espresso who knows probably is i can't wait to watch this because i'm i had it's a, gonna be a good one i'm curious it's i don't even long. know what that looks like mini shoes and all that right in there. there no so, shit that's what i was picturing yeah so that's he, crazy just for the parking brake here's one of the good ones you can see starting to crack. oh sure yeah yeah and so yeah these sit it's behind the wheel hub on the inside of the rotor. Why and would so the, they make it that oh, complicated? Yeah. <laughs> and so that one, it just completely shed. Yep. Completely shed its friction material. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So Thanks for the you. business. Thanks Thank for you. the support. Absolutely. Thanks for helping me keep the lights on. Of course. We'll be back. Yeah. Let me know how it runs. Shoot me a text. And, uh, Another satisfied customer. Cool. That's what I like to hear. And then... Uh, I will. I'll send the link to you. All right, man. Adios, Eric. Pleasure doing business, my friend. Well, guys, that's a wrap. It is a beautiful, frigid morning. Eric is absolutely pumped on the car. We definitely stayed true to our standard and over-delivered. We have so much work done on that car. Um, hard to even keep track. But to stay true to the title of the video, that's what... Roughly $2,100 of BMW repair work looks like in my shop. Now, if you were to go to another shop and have that same amount of repairs done, you'd be looking at closer to $4,000. Not only would they not charge you $75 an hour for labor, it would be closer to $100 to $150 for a BMW shop per hour, but they also would not charge you cost on parts. I charged Eric exactly how much it cost me to order those parts and in order for shops to pay for the warranty that they provide through their business, they normally charge you list price on parts. So say an alternator cost me 280 bucks, that shop's gonna sell that alternator to you for 550, for 570. That way, if you come back in a year and that alternator took a crap, well, they had enough money built into the previous repair, they can warranty it, they can eat the labor for a second repair, have the parts swapped out, yada, yada, yada. So. So that's going to wrap this one up, folks. I hope you enjoyed, or I hope you learned something new, and I will see you on my next day off. Cheers, everybody.